Hi there! Uh, this is an instructional video slash educational for uh, uh, the old Polaroid automatic LAN cameras. The uh, old Polaroid LAN cameras were uh, kind of a special design with this bellows feature right here and uh, uh, plastic or metal casing. They also happen to include, for one of the first times, uh, well Polaroid did have old world film cameras that had an electronic function to them, but uh, those are with discontinued film. In any case, uh, the LAN cameras were one of the first Polaroid cameras to include an electronic function, which is uh, uh, partially why that little lens is right there. Now the electronic function was uh, set so that instead of having to deduce uh, what lighting condition you were in and so on and so forth, the um, this little lens right here, called an electric eye, would actually deduce that for you. And when you went to click the shutter button, it would actually uh, it would click once for the manual shutter you did, but then it wouldn't fully close until the electric eye decided that there was enough exposure. And then you'd hear a second click. Now, with these, how you'd originally start and I'm going to move this for a second to show you. Let's get this back in its first position. And put this back on. This will be a quick second. Alright. So all land cameras you would originally see in this state. And it would have a case covering it right here. The case, if you pushed up right here and here, it would come up and then it would be, it would come out like this. Now, in order to take it off if you wanted to, you pushed on this lever while pulling it out. Now, to put it back in, you would simply do the reverse thing. I'm going to take it off for a second so we can go through the rest. Now, some Polaroids had the viewfinder and the rangefinder flipped down and you would flip it back up afterwards. That is after taking the case off. And then if you see this this uh, up arrow that has the number one right there, Polaroid did a fun thing with the land cameras where it was supposed to be numbered one, two, three, four for all of the functions you had to go through. So number one was that you'd have to push up and as you pushed up, you could pull the bellows out. Now, the bellows are there because the lens, actually the, the, the image of the picture would change because of the bellows correlation to the lens. The farther out or in you were, the, um, the farther in and out you were for your picture. And they had a fun little thing right here that as you pulled it out, it would show you what kind of a picture you were taking. So if you wanted the best picture for like a couple's portrait, you would line up that arrow to the couple's right there. If you wanted more of like a uh, landscape scene, you'd line up your arrow to the arrow there. And if you wanted just a one shot close up, you would do that. Now, I'm going to show you real quick how to push uh, push the bellows back in just because we're right here and we might as well do it. So you would push right here. They usually say press to close on these suspension rods or not suspension rods but bars. Now you push in and right there you see that it clicks off. I'll do it again just so you see. Right there when you press pushes in, closes it and then you just push the bellows back in. Uh, at this point, let me pull it back out real quick so we can go forward. Now at this point you've got the bellows pulled out. The next thing that you would do is you would click the uh, just think, there you go. You would click uh, this button right here down. And what that does is it suspends the spring for the shutter to close 
right right there. That leaves you ready to push the, sh the, the shutter button, which is right here. So you just simply click and you would hear that sound. Now, it only sounds once because right now I don't have the electronic function on. But I will get to that in a few minutes and we'll hear it go. Uh, so that's the simplisticness of it. Now, after that, I would point out on the back. The back of every LAN camera is fairly similar. Now, this side would house your film, and this side would house your battery. Now, I'll get to the battery in a minute, but first we're going to start with the basics of the film. So, in order to open up this latch right here, you would come down here, and there's always going to be a little latch right there. And you push, and when it's all the way over, you would pull out, and you would see this. Now, let's see, do I have enough light? I do. So now you can see this pretty clearly. Now, I have an expired roll of film that I'm going to put in here just to show you. So, <coughs> here's your... Here's your lens right here with your bellows and what you want to do is you want to have your pack of film which this is my expired pack of film right here and if you see these little clips right here which you can kind of see um, let me just make sure okay you can see them what you would do is you would clip it in Just a second. Uh, let's see. All right, come on. This will be just a minute. All right. So I'm going to make sure that's in focus, and then I'll, I'll show you this again in a second. So, you put your, your uh, film so that it's upright like this towards the lens, and then you would push that in right there, and then if you see your other side, there is a red clip. Let's see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So there's a red clip right here that you undo. When you undo that, it pulls out your rollers just like this, okay? And that's gonna help you out a lot. Let me put it back in focus. So, you pull that out and then when you're going to when you're going to uh, put your first tab in, which uh, this isn't perfect because, like I said, this is an old expired uh, film piece. I'm going to pull this up again. Sorry, sometimes it's easier to do off the camera. Uh, okay. So, make sure. All right, that's good. So you pull your first tab through the roller, and then as you're doing that, you want to make sure, you see right here this comes up like this, and you want to make sure that that's just like that, All right? And then you should be able, yeah, should be able to push it in just like that. Now, when your exposure is done, you're going to pull this just out like this, and then after that, you get this other tab. And that's when, that's when you pull it straight out. I hope you can see this. Here, let me do like that, and the rollers are going to push that through, and you should have See, this is expired, so it's uh, coming undone. But usually what happens is there's this 
Uh, there's this black and white side and what happens is when you pull it out the film has been exposed to the lens. So the film to the lens has been exposed through this. However, you want to keep it on for a certain amount of time. It depends upon how much time based on the temperature because uh, what's happening is the developer chemicals that are basically a jelly and they uh, they subside at the end of each piece of film when they come through the rollers the roller squeezes that jelly out onto the picture now the picture isn't completely instant because what needs to happen now is instead of being completely overexposed uh, it needs to be needs to be uh, kept on this black side so that it's not completely exposed for a few minutes. Now after about five minutes I'd say on really cold temperature uh, and we'll get into the cold temperature in a bit I would take it off and then you should see your picture. Now that's how you take out the film. So now I'm gonna get on to the uh, um, just a second now I'm gonna get on to the battery side. So on all of my cameras, you'll see on all of the old Polaroid Land cameras, there is this, uh, I'm hoping you can see that well, there is a, an old uh, Polaroid battery compartment. Now the battery compartments, the batteries are just, uh, they're a touch old, they're kind of expensive, uh, I've been seeing them for around twenty dollars a piece and so what I've done on all of mine is I've actually uh, adapted them so that you can use AAA batteries which are extremely cheaper and they last for uh, thousands of uses you know you don't have to worry about buying that very expensive battery but in any case so what I've done is I've adapted it so no longer do you use that compartment uh, you might want to open them up when you're taking the batteries out and putting new ones in. But instead, I have connected straight to the outside compartment of it, I have a, a AAA holder. Now, when you open the compartment, which you want to do to loosen the cable up, uh, you can undo it. And there are, there's a slot for three AAA batteries. Now. You put the batteries in, and let me let me grab three. Sorry, just a second. And I'm going to put these three in. Okay. Now I've got the three in, and I do have an on-off switch. Uh, don't worry too much if your uh, on-off switch gets left on because. Like I said, the uh, the amount of battery energy that it actually takes, it, it isn't that much, even if you leave it on. Uh, however, if you want to click on and off, go for it. In any case, so I fit it back in, and then uh, these cables, I'll make sure that they're back inside the case safely, and I do leave a little bit of a uh, little bit of a tug on the bat battery cable going into as I'm putting it in because uh, oh that got connected to uh, to my sheet just a second and let's get that all back in okay because when when the battery terminal is put back on the holder I want to leave a little bit of tension just so that this doesn't try to pop out of the holder that's attached Okay, so now we have three batteries in. Now let me show you. Uh, now let me show you the other part of it, the electronic part. So we're gonna click down again to suspend that. And now you're gonna hear you should hear two clicks. So that was pretty fast. And what that's doing, like I said, is the first one is just the manual click, but the shutter is still held.
for another second because the electric eye is actually saying, hey, hold on for the shutter to, uh, to swing back down and close so that there's a few seconds extra, or in this case, maybe a second and a half extra of uh, exposure time so it develops more correctly. Uh, now, that being said, it can take longer. It depends on what exposure in. Like for instance, right now, this camera is in front of a massive amount of lights. Uh, however, let's see if I can get it to go a little bit slower. Sometimes it can take up to like half a minute. I've seen that happen. Uh, let's see, maybe with that. That was a second later, but here I'll, I'm going to take it off for a second and just let you hear it when it is in somewhere that's a little bit darker. And so if you heard that, probably about four or five seconds later. Uh, so that's about it for the basics. Just to expand a little bit, uh, each Polaroid land camera, when it comes to uh, comes to the electric eye, has some of them are completely automatic, and some of them have extra features. For instance, this is the 100, and if you look right here, let's make sure that's in focus. Uh, let's see. So if you look right here. Um, Sorry about this. Let's see. I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see better. Uh, come on. Okay, that's probably about good. And then move it down a little bit. And. Okay, so right here, you'll see it says color, black and white, outdoor flash, bright sun only, bright sun, uh, or dual day, also for flash, indoors without flash. So basically, there is a switch right here, um, this blue switch, and then there's also uh, film speed right here. And if you change the film speed, it will definitely change how the electric eye views uh, how much exposure it needs, basically how many more seconds does the shutter need to be open. The other thing that changes it is that blue knob on the back, on the bottom of the Polaroid, for this one at least, it will show uh, like outdoors or flash, all that jazz, and that will change the electric eye's correspondence to how many seconds too. Now you can switch that with the knob. So for instance, that turns into the bottom two. Now we're on the top two. Now, <clears throat> to show you some other models real quick, while I still have time, uh, there are some models that don't have things like that. For instance, this is the 320. Uh, the 320 is essentially the same, except it only has uh, speed differences for 75 and 3000 although if you want you can use 75 for the FP uh, 100C uh, film that's out because it's cha just changing it from 75 grain to 100 grain uh, and then the other thing is that uh, Polaroid land cameras either uh, in my modification either use two double A's or as the 100 was a three double A. The other thing that I forgot to mention, and unfortunately I don't have a camera uh, that has it right now, but some of the Polaroids also happen to have a timer right here. An electronic timer, uh, and some of them are manual too. The electronic timer and the manual timer work as timers to tell you when to take your film and actually when to separate. So on the electric one it actually has a little uh, a little trigger right inside that when the film is pulled out it starts the countdown lights up and